just you get to choose. Right? Like here's here's the scenario: the, the environment gives us something which can be perceived as negative, can be perceived as not working, can be perceived as problematic. The world's ending. So we get to choose to see it like that, or we get to see choose to see it as an opportunity. So clearly, that it's my responsibility now to do that for other people. If I have information, and you know, other people's success is my success, and vice versa. Because you know what, like the challenges or the roadblocks are the journey themselves. There's no big things. It's all little things compounding on top of each other. All right, welcome back to another episode of Truth Seekers with Coach Nick Davies and myself, Coach Josh Greco. We have R.C. Olson joining us today. Welcome, R.C. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. It's been it's that kind of day. Somewhere, day. Probably, right? It's morning somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Still over in maybe Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> so good stuff. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Excited to have you join us today. Uh, before we jump into anything, we'd love to have you introduce yourself and just share a little bit about uh, about yourself. Absolutely. Uh, I'm R.C. Olson. I'm currently a, an executive account manager for TSI Global. Uh, I am also a serial entrepreneur on the side and a mentor to startup businesses. A mentor to startup businesses. I would love to start there um, because Coach Nick and I work a lot in pattern things or we, we look for the repetition of things, right? Our whole True Seekers podcast is based on the simple secrets of the successful. So I'm wondering if you might kick us off with, I don't know, a common thread that you see as either, uh, you know, something that every startup must do well to be successful and, and or by the same token, uh, something to look out for that somebody should be aware of that's starting up a company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think the common thread there, uh, Josh, is uh, a lot of folks that um, start their own business or are in the process of doing a startup. Um, first off, they, they have the the gumption and the fortitude to go ahead and let's say, I'm going to take that leap of faith, whether it's a, a side business to start, or it's, you know, something that, that they're just really going all out in. Um, so they're, they're always a very, very proud person. Um, and the one thing that we always try and let them, you know, kind of, it's great that what you're doing, right. It's wonderful. We want to help you. Um, you're going to be successful if you, listen to what people have to say that have been through this before, mm. help you if you're open. Okay. So being open to suggestions, to comments, to help you improve, uh, you'll succeed a lot quicker. So if you're willing to do that, um, you know, it goes back to the old, uh, right. Uh, faculty proportion, right. You've got two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. Use them, use them in proportion. Uh, they'll do well. Of that coach be coachable. Have you ever heard that yeah, before? Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, right? It's like, hey, we have everything that you need here. All you have to do is be open to take the new perspectives and to take the new action. Are you okay with that? Like, and I, like I often say when I'm looking right. for clients, all I'm looking for is two things. I'm looking the hunger for the hunger, which you already talked about, I see, because they're they're owning their own company, right? They've got the hunger, and I'm open, and I'm looking for people that are open to taking new actions and with new perspectives. That's it. That's all you need, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. We, we want to help you succeed. Uh, and having done it in the past, uh, you know, having, uh, let's see, first first and second startups, one, the second one be be went better than the first. Uh, the third one went great, um, you know, wound up uh, succeeding over a, a number of years and wind up getting bought and merged uh, with some other companies and selling out. So that was a success story that we can go back and tell uh two folks that are starting business up and it's nice to see them when they actually you know have that moment of okay i'm here um i've got it and it's okay to ask for help because quite frankly you can't do it all your own so you're going to need to build a team around what you're starting and, and trust you know advisors coaches like yourselves um and others in your in your world to uh help you move that along and the the, the more willing you are to do that the quicker you'll find success is there something to play off of RC with, uh, you know, you mentioned almost two sides of the coin there with somebody who's starting out with their own company, like the pride factor, like there's almost the pride in it being mine. Like I've created this, this is mine. And then at a certain yeah. point, you know, it could happen right away, but it could also happen like down the road where it makes sense to like let go of some of that pride. Like, how do you, how do you see that? 
Um, well, I mean, for me, it was difficult. Um, you know, as, as more and more people were brought in the company, you were kind of like, okay, I'm losing control of this. I'm losing control of that. But realizing, you know, after a few weeks, a few months of that, everything was okay. Everything was still functioning. And then you can go ahead and focus on other objectives you have, right, to help grow, uh, expand the business and reach more people. So I, I think that once people have that first success moment of seeing that it is okay when others start taking pieces uh, from you uh, to drive it along, the better you're going to be. The more time that frees up in your schedule and it's flipping that mindset, right? It's, it's going from total ownership to, okay, uh, I'm a leader in one faction of it, but it, it's still here and it's still growing. Coach Nick, I'd like to actually get your insight into this because I think we as coaches are always looking to speed up a process that we we know is coming is there is there a way to do that like there's no substitute for experience right so some people just might have to experience that for themselves you know i just grabbed onto what rc was saying about you know it takes weeks or months sometimes for people to you know first of all be open to it but then second of all practice it and then be okay with uh witnessing it and happening and unfolding before their very eyes so is there a way to like speed up that process or how do you, how do you see that yeah, you have a coach or a fantastic mentor like RC. I mean, I think that I think that's fundamentally what we do as a collective for whoever your particular focus is. Is that it's say that there, here's I've got particular experience in this area, but it's principles and concepts overall which we can replicate. And I know this is going to happen, or that's going to happen. And you're on your own journey. I can't tell you exactly how it's going to be for you, how it's going to feel for you or exactly how it's going to go, but it's going to go along this kind of track. And I think that is what we do fundamentally is squish time. If it took us, like you said, RC, that for, the first one went all right, the second one went, went good, and the third one was great. If you can take all that stuff and, and help people save decades, like turn decades into days, then we've done a good job, right? Like, I mean, do that, though, yeah. right? You can say, like, that cost me three years. I mean, Coach Rich, like CEO of Pro Advisor Coach, is often saying to me things like, hey, it took me five years to do that. How'd you do that in three weeks? So, well, you've been like been working for you with you for two years, right? Like that's that sort of thing uh, is is powerful, right? Because the only thing we're not getting more of is the time. So we can squish that up. Think about what what those yeah. people that we work with can achieve. Because if you're in your 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 or that example, I see with your third company, if you can help people, they can do six or ten, right? If they if they wanted to, but it's just you can squish up the time a little bit. It's powerful. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. And I think that, you know, part of it also is, you know, uh, being a mentor, um, the group that I'm mentoring in, the, the organization I'm mentoring in, it's not one-on-one -on -one mentoring, it's group mentoring. So while we're helping somebody with a startup or an emerging business, you know, it's, it's very gratifying because I'm also learning, yeah. right? There's different yep. points of view and there's different perspectives and, and people have different skill sets. So I'm also learning and becoming better uh, in my world because of other people. So, you know, at the end of the day, you walk away from it and you're like, wow, okay, you know, did I learn more today than the person we were mentoring? You know, I mean, so sometimes you have those moments. 100%. Right. That's so true, isn't it, Coach? <laughs> yeah, but learn from my clients all day. <laughs> yeah, I feel like our, our clients are are as much here for us as as we are there for them. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and no, absolutely, and and just you know seeing seeing success on all levels and and folks that fail, you know, because it it's the old you know two steps forward, one step back sometimes, and um, okay, let's not do that again. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're all learning. Uh, we're all. We're all people trying to succeed and do better, right? And and ultimately, if somebody is trying to create a business to to help others and to do better, whether it's you know in, in society or you know helping underprivileged, I mean that is just even more so uh, gratifying when you see that success happen. Love that, RC. You have a really um, interesting, at least it was interesting to me about your professional experience. I was wondering if maybe you could highlight, especially even uh, the very beginning. Of like the media the very beginning wow that's a long time ago josh <laughs> i just i want to i want to just touch upon those things to make a point of like how it shaped your perception and, and where you are today absolutely no I, I appreciate that um so you know it's i've always been or i should say the majority of my life and career has been part of startup and growing businesses um 
you know, it, when I was, it goes back to when I was in, in, in college. Um, I wasn't a great high school student. I went to community college. I always had a business on the side. So, uh, but from there, um, I, I happened to be a business major in taking classes in community college. And I, I took an elective uh, communications, right? TV and, and uh, broadcast uh, elective. And I fell in love with it. And uh, I happened to be fortunate enough to start um, an internship with CNBC right after they had gone on the air. And uh, that turned into a freelance gig. And then that turned into staff. And then, you know, that grew as CNBC was literally, I think I told you, Josh, I was employee 311. You know, now there's thousands of employees around the world. Um, but growing with that company, growing as a family, um, and then moving over to a, a larger opportunity, um, with NBC, starting up a brand new operation over there, uh, which was central casting, multiple stations. It was all about growth and about better and better advancement. And it was very, very fulfilling. Um, you know, at some point there, you know, life took a turn for me as far as uh, where I'm supposed to be. Um, I left the tri-state area of New York and, and moved to North Carolina. Um, that's about the time the economy went horrible. Um, you know, back in the, the 08, 09, things tanked. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a good work scene. Uh, wife went back to work. Uh, that was when I started my first business. Um, things got back on track there. And then, as I had mentioned to you, uh, you know, starting our initial company name was called uh, Ingenuity Sun Media. And we were doing outdoor digital displays uh, using solar credits and, and a whole bunch of things. And that developed uh, into you know, advertising and, and how do we make this more sticky and how do we develop this and, and really tapping into resources and other folks that we had in our lives to grow this business. Um, ultimately, that business grew. We partnered with a few other firms and then, um, you know, one very extremely wise and, and uh, uh, well off gentleman uh, looked at our companies and said, you guys all need to be one and I want to buy you and merge you. And that's what happened. Um, from there, uh, went on to uh, a technology integration firm, uh, different from what I'm at now, but that got me into this scene. And uh, the common thread through that has always been technology, um, whether it's uh, television, cable television, broadcast television, media, now it's corporate environments. And where it goes from here now with the world we're living in, uh, the hybrid workplace, the hybrid work environment, this is the forefront of a new you know, a, a new type of lifestyle and work style. And I'm excited to learn more, uh, you know, pretty blessed to have a lot of innovative technology companies coming up with products that, you know, transition from work to physical work, brick and mortar to your home. Uh, and I'm just excited every day to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. So kind of in an encapsulating nutshell of uh, 27 years, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's a pretty awesome job. There's a little, like you said, a lot to cover there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I think about how about hosting podcasts virtually. Like that's an example right there, right? Technology. We don't even like think about how much how much technology plays a, a role in almost everything that we do. It's it's a hundred percent of what we do. It's wild. Mm. Yeah, I mean, media is now touching our lives in ways that you know we never thought possible. Um, I can recall back when I was with NBC, and that was when we were you know going from pagers to flip phones, right? And they were talking about, oh, one day there's going to be videos on these things. And we're going, no, it'll never happen. That's impossible. I mean, six years later, that was the first the first uh, smartphone, I guess. What was it? Blackberries, right? Oh, yeah. Oh. And then it went from there. <laughs> Love the Blackberry. Love the Blackberry. It was very, it very, very useful. Cool. Very cool. Remember the <laughs> first ones with like the wheel on the side where you can flip through your windows? Yeah. Yeah, they were cool. But it's I know. Uh, <laughs> You know, unfortunately, most people that are uh, under the age of 30 would never even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Move so quickly. <laughs> well, you said that technology was the theme, I see. And so that's so, super in intriguing to kind of dig into for me because I, me and Coach often talk about, you know, that once you get to a certain level in whatever your chosen field is, you can then just go to whatever field you want to go to because it all becomes the same principles and concepts. And the, and te and the technical part of it, whilst important can be either learn quickly because you understand the principles of learning, or you can have people that have the technology experience in that industry and you can be a senior person there. And so having technology as the theme, do you, is that, is that part of what's driven you through it? Or is it just happened to be you followed where the things are exciting for you or followed where the opportunities are? 
how do you think about that? If you expand a little bit on whatever comes to mind for you there, RC, I'd love to hear. Well, I mean, you know, technology, it was, it's always evolving. It's going to be incredibly advanced in the next five years, what's happening on what I'm seeing, you know, on the forefront. Um, my career path has kind of always gone back to technology. Um, I don't want to say it was, you get pigeonholed into it, but when you have a a knowledge base of something throughout your career, um, you kind of are led down that path. Those where the opportunities find themselves. Um, some of the side things in my life that that don't relate to that are, are things that um, you know technology will be involved, right? So uh, I've also and not to change gears here, but you know, there's there's a lot going on right now with um, like you know you think about the the smart farming and and agricultural needs and food needs and how is technology playing into that, right? So you have a whole nother host of, of technology and mindsets there that's not necessarily video, uh, not necessarily audio, but it's data sets, right? And that's all feeding into um, our world and and in production, not only just food production, but productive people's lives, right? Everything has become a data set. Um, and that's where I kind of see a lot of this going right now, probably my next phase, hopefully my pre-retirement phase career uh, will be going that way. But, um, you know, that that's where my thought is uh, on as far as like how technology has been involved, where I think it's going. Um, I mean, you coach um, some, some, you know, high level people where, how does technology come into play with that? I mean, obviously you're doing a lot of, you know, virtual uh, live stream coaching and whatnot. Uh, how do you see that going into your career? So I'll put that back towards you. Yeah, for, for me, it's, I mean, that's awesome, right? Like, cause it, it's the theme and what, where I was really getting to with that RC is like, are you following where it's going because you're interested in it? Or are you following where it's going because it's, it's where the opportunity is? Cause I always think about this different, we have different preferences, whether we, where we on the entrepreneurial preference to just go where the excitement is and go, I can make that cause I know how to do it. Or like the art artist where it's like, you're in a, you're in a position where you want to do a specific thing. Or like, are you the operations person, right? So I, that was interesting treatment for me. But I certainly think for coaching as a whole, consulting, speaking overall, I, I think there's massive opportunity because you can just cover a lot more, like a lot more space. You know, I, I was, I'm going to focus a lot on, on speaking in the coming year and, and thinking about that a lot more. You know, traditionally, going into speaking spaces, there's a lot of flying around the country, around the world. And, and now you can do virtual right. speaking to hit a lot of people when you can do, you know, two weeks work in an afternoon. And so I think there's just a case of being able to accelerate, but obviously the challenge when you do that is to make sure that you're having the right impact and not just doing, just doing the, the numbers for no reason. You know, like I was, you know, think about it when you're constantly on, on available on your phone, you know, that's great, but at the same time, you're constantly available on your phone. So I think we have an opportunity <laughs> that things could also overrun where we are. So we've got to be careful with that and just make sure that we're in the right space. You know, how do you think about it coach? Yeah, I, I almost I think of it uh, in the opposite direction too of like simplifying. Right. Like technology is here to to simplify. And to your point, like it can make things more complicated sometimes. Yeah. And uh, where I go to, you know, we we've mentioned uh, on previous episodes that we practice gamification of success. I think of that like a technology piece. Like we're we find a way to use statistics to rank how we're doing uh, by way of identifying the most important activities that we could be doing to you know, in alignment to achieve the results that we're looking to achieve. So there's probably exponential versions of that. You know, there's, uh, you know, I think of sports are always a great reference to have, but like sabermetrics and hockey, for example, or, you know, all the data that comes out of baseball nowadays, it's crazy what we're measuring. And that's, you know, in, in the athletic world. Yeah. So there, I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of advantage there at, at the high level front office, uh, just like there might be, you know, at the, at the C-suite level of a company. But uh, I like what you said, Coach Nick, about, you know, we got to make sure that we're not just measuring to measure that there's actual right. fruitful things coming out of it, too. Yeah. And I think some of the things with technology, um, while, yes, they boosted our productivity levels tremendously. Um, I think that, you know, the, the, the COVID the last few years have really shown us that um, as much as technology can enable us to do work remotely, uh, as human beings, we need to socialize. Um, and I'm finding that more once things open back up now with some networking groups that I've been involved with for the last five years, getting out and seeing people face to face is there's you can't put a data set yeah, on that. Right. right. 
Um, just like, you know, when you're in business development or sales, you know, how many outbound efforts have you made, you know, whether it's an email campaign or whatnot. Well, that's great. You can measure that data set. But if you're at a social event and you have five meaningful conversations over that, what you're getting from that is you can't put into a data set because you've, you've made a human connection that will never be replaced. Yeah. And that's something I see oftentimes people want to go into the, 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 uh, the people side of it deeper. And some, some coaches are like that, you know, we're looking at bringing lots of coaches into pro advisor coach. And, you know, some people are real thorough coaches and they, all they care about is the people side of it. Like want, that's where they want to be. And it's so important. Right. And I think that's where 80% of it is. But but knowing that we do want to take that twenty percent in and say like like if we actually put some numbers to this stuff, we can we can accelerate because you know it's like it's not it's not the, the data set or the people, it's both you know and so the balance of that both is dependent on what the result you're after. But yeah, it's a really important place to play when we think about really any industry as we're moving forward. I mean, I think that you know you can take that into play with most things, you know, as far as how businesses grow, how production grows, right? So right now we're in our current time in society, you know, supply chain issues and these issues and, and fertilizer issues now with things that are going on in Europe and um, really wanting to simplify things. And I think there is a, um, there's an organic movement to, you know, get back to, you know, how things used to be, right? People, people have that drive for a simpler life because we've been forced into this technology driven life. Um, so I'm seeing a little bit of that. Um, I'm kind of enthused on that. I, you know, I love the outdoors. I love getting my hands in the dirt and, and doing things um, uh, and, and just being out, right. Being out in nature, being locked down, I think really uh, gave people a, you know, a weird sense of belonging and being and being outdoors and in touch. Mm. I don't know what your, th you guys thoughts are on that. Yeah, I, I think of it uh, like the pendulum effect. Mm -hmm. um, this is the case for any anything that we swing back and forth on. But it, what you're saying, right, is out, out of all this technology has come this desire to get back to that connectivity. Uh, and I think that was Coach Nick's point right at the end there. Like the integration of the two is the beautiful yeah. thing. Right? And, and it's all about having that balance. And when it gets out of balance, just recognize it's swinging back and forth, right? It's going back and forth. There's no yep. need to to set the fire alarms off, but to know when it, when it is about to go the other way, like to, to embrace that, right. Let's, let's go back the other direction here and to know, right. It'll come back eventually the other way in the opposite direction, but just to know where we are is, is that superpower in that example. Yeah. And it's all about those, those winning examples, right. I, I see you said that you started a business first in 08, you know, it's like on the face of it, it seems like a terrible time to, to create a business, but actually it's a fantastic time, right. Because everything's like there's opportunities, maybe less overall, but there's certainly less people looking for them. So um, I imagine that was a big part or part of the success of that, at least in some some respects. But but you know, we know it's going to come back around, you know. So I, perhaps I can ask you a question on that, uh, RC, just to kind of ch change it up a little bit. We're recording this the, the Monday after Thanksgiving here and just coming into the last part of the year and really th I'm taking the last couple of weeks off of the year, so three weeks left for me, I'm thinking about that. What would you say for people in in business? What what's really important to think about at this time of year? Like what what's what's the thing that people most people aren't doing? Like what what comes to mind to you? What's what's your go to that perhaps entrepreneur, entrepreneurs need to think about? Like as they're as we're in effect closing the books and thinking about the new year, what jumps to mind? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've always you know, taking the end of the year, the last few weeks, as you said, so I, I, I'm working right now, but, you know, I can see since, you know, the day before Thanksgiving, right, the, the emails just slow down, everything slows down, a lot of people just kind of start checking out towards the end of the year. Um, I like to, to go back and really look back on the year, right? Like, where did I start? What have I accomplished? And, and really reflect on the things we've done, right? Positive, negative, uh, opportunities that we may may have wanted to take in uh, and didn't, um, things that we maybe did but shouldn't have done, uh, but also in, in business and in life, you know, measure your successes and and look look to set up, you know, set your table, set your template for the following year, right, for the next year. What do I want to do? What goals do I want to hit? Um, and where do I want to be? You know, 
um, measure not just professionally, but in your personal life. Um, I want to spend more time mentoring and coaching. I want to spend more time, you know, taking up a new hobby. You know, I want to double the size of my garden this year. I, you know, whatever it is, put it down on paper so that you can go back. And once the new year starts, you can say, okay, this is what I said in the waiting weeks uh, of the year as things slowed down. Now let's set a calendar on how to, how I want to execute on that. Um, and what do I really want to accomplish in my life uh, for this year, upcoming year? A great reminder of the power that we have, right? Just by focusing on and deciding to focus on certain things, we will get those things. It's just making that decision to focus on it. And I love what you said, like this time of year, just reflection. This is the opposite end of the, the goal setting in the beginning of the year, right? We get to think about what we have accomplished and maybe how that's changed along the way. I think part of that is is the iteration. You know, we don't know how 2023 is going to unfold, but we got to no. st start out somewhere, right? And then be, be okay with unfolding in, in different directions. But that's that reflection. The more we can reflect on that, then we can get better at that, at, at what we want to decide to focus on in, in years future. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's OK, right? If you go off track, if you don't do this, it's OK. As long as you kind of get to a place where you can reset and refocus and do what you're going to do. Um, you know, one one thing that I, I've always told people when they're starting the mentoring process, right? I say, you know, your vision of your company right now you're going to look back on this in a year and be like, whoa, this is not even close to what I thought about. And that's the funniest thing. When you tell them that up front, they're like, no, no, it's going to be like this. I go, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just, not. <laughs> it's going to look very different. You know, you might think you're Picasso, but you're going to be a oh, finger yeah. painter. Okay. <laughs> but what's wild about it is like in the moment of them saying that, that is the right thing because that's all there is until we find out the other thing. That, that's kind yeah. of like a real odd dichotomy of life, right? It's like, well, why bother setting it then if I know it's not going to be that? Well, you won't ever find out the thing it's going to be if you don't set the thing it's not. It's just kind of a really weird yep. thing to contend with. But yeah, you see it all the time. Yeah, fantastic. Um, take yeah. your time here, Coach. Yeah, um, I'm just going to make a quick point yeah. that uh, that was probably the genesis of my question earlier about you know, speeding up that process, maybe that's the answer. Like we have to, we have to, it's a, it's a gradual process. It's a, it's a step process. So they have to get to that point before they can get to the point that we already know that they'll get to, but that's where the, you know, that's where our mentoring and guidance comes in here. So uh, yes, RC at this point in the episode, we usually like to wrap with, uh, you know, a principle that was a good reminder for us today or something that you're taking away. That was a new insight for you. Uh, and or would love for you to plug, you know, what you're currently working on and, and what you're focused on for 2023. Um, I mean, so my takeaway from this podcast, I mean, first and foremost, you know, when we when we spoke earlier, uh, I guess it was last week, you said that this 30 minutes is going to fly by and you were 100 percent on point with that statement. Um, for the the coming year, create create habits for yourselves. Um, you know, I, I've kind of developed routines over my life. Um you know, for me, it's I spend the first 20 minutes of my day stretching and a little bit of meditation, getting myself ready for the day. I think that that just kind of, you know, clears, clears my mind. It gets me set. Even though you're waking up, you just you need to set your day out good. Um, something I'm working on for this upcoming year. Um, I really want to look at um, how technology is going to help the agricultural business and solve some of our logistical supply chain problems and and how can we bring farming back to an urban setting and a a real kind of family farm type setting um is where i want to spend a little bit of my time focusing on, on seeing what's out there and and how and if i can make any kind of positive impact on that nice that's that purposeful stuff that you were mentioning earlier so thank you for that and looking forward to, to hearing more about that that's awesome RC Olson, thank you for joining True Seekers. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great week. Thank you for watching another episode of True Seekers. We appreciate your interaction. So please comment, like, subscribe to YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want more, check out some of our links. Thanks to our masterclass, The Achiever's Mindset, and come join our LinkedIn group. And what do you want to see more of? Remember, we're here to share the simple secrets of successful. So help us do that. What do you want to see? What do you want to see more of? Thanks, and see you again next time.